hi welcome back to my studio i'm here to show you my adapted sheet load of cards for june 2022 and um, so this is the sketch and supply list that um, alicia call me crafty owl on youtube provides for us every month um, and this month's edition is a fun fold card so she tells you what supplies you need how many it'll make what the dimensions are if you just want to make one card alternatives etc as I said before, I tend to adapt the sheet load of cards, particularly the ones that she's done for A2 size cards. I adapt them to UK standard card sizes, which is C6, um, purely because A2 envelopes can be more expensive to get hold of in the UK, um, especially at the moment. So I've only actually finished one card. Um, it took me slightly longer than I was expecting. I think my brain was broken um to change the measurements and also although although i've cut all the pieces for all the rest of the cards i have a bit of a i had a bit of a time crunch as far as i've got quite a lot of cards that i need to make for special occasions this week um but i thought as this was a fun fold card and i have a little girl's birthday to go to at the weekend that this would be the perfect opportunity to use um, some of my stash and have a play with this so this is my finished card so what I've used um, simple stories papers um, from dream big and little princess um, along with a sticker from the sticker sheet and a the sentiment here is from magical birthdays sticker book I have a vast quantity of um, simple stories paper Weirdly, and anybody who's ever seen my craft room and like family will find this very hard to believe, I don't appear to have any holographic card. What I've used on this is I was going through my stash, fairly certain that in the mountains of cardstock that I have, I must have holographic cardstock. And all I could find was this like, and sorry if that's going to make the camera go weird, was this like foily paper stuff, which I have absolutely no idea how long I've had it for. Or where I got it from but in a pinch it worked I did have to be a little bit ginger about cutting it because I use a sliding trimmer I was using a sliding trimmer for this for this particular cards and uh, if you don't start it in the middle it tears which was fun to find out so it's a fun fold card and it opens like this I've embellished the inside with a bit of um, washi tape that came with um, I believe the magical birthday collection I'm not 100% sure, but it's cute unicorn um, washi tape. And as the invite that I had had unicorns all over it, I believe the unicorns will be appreciated. Um, and when I I have somewhere in my stash, I have a stamp set that says something like, hope your birthday is as magical as you or have a magical birthday, that kind of thing. So I will stamp sentiment in a coordinating colour ink inside. Right, that's the exciting bit. To give you the dimensions for a UK sized card, so the cutting guide, maybe you can see that on screen, but if not, I will I will I will go through it. So the actual plain card, i.e. this piece that we cut, so that you can get the most out of your A4 sheets of paper, it is only I've cut them at nine and seven eighths by four and one eighth and then scored them at four and one eighth the inside smaller card which i've seen another youtuber put like a one and a half inch strip of pattern paper across here and turn this into a gift card holder which i thought was a great idea this piece is again is eight and a quarter by three and one eighths as opposed to the eight and a half by three and a quarter that's called for on the sketch just so that you can get three out of a UK A4 sheet of cardstock so obviously because we've changed the size of the base card and the size of this that will mean that all the patterned paper measurements change also so Instead of the four by four square that is called for on the sketch, you would cut for the UK your pattern paper to three and three quarters by three and three quarters. You'll see I've got another little measurement here off to the side, but this was for my eighth of an inch mat. So the, the four by four pieces will be three and three quarters by three and three quarters. 
what was originally a four by three will become a three and three quarter by two and three quarter. And what was originally a five and a quarter by four will become five and a half by three and seven eighths. You'll still be able to get the same amount of pieces from a 12 by 12, because actually, with the exception of this larger panel being slightly longer, the majority of our mats are actually smaller than what Elisha has called for on her sketch. Um, and I have got another couple of measurements here. I decided that with my particular pattern papers and because it was unicorns and because I wanted to use some of this uh, holographic paper that I mistakenly thought I had loads of, um, I put an eighth of an inch mat round the original four and three quarter piece and the four and four, uh, four by four piece. So the mat sizes for those for the UK would be three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths for the original four by four piece and three and seven eighths by two and seven eighths for the original four by three piece. Hopefully that's clear as mud. <laughs> but if there's any questions, just um, pop them in the comments below and I can uh, double check my measurements for you and uh, come back to you. So hopefully um, you've enjoyed this. I suggest everybody join in on these they're monthly challenges that Alicia provides free of charge to subscribers for her channel and obviously you get to print out the sheet load guide and then you can keep it for reference it's a good way of getting extra get extra card sketches and it's you know you you obviously end up with some scraps from your 12 by 12 from this process but it's a good way of using up patterned paper so that you have room to buy more okay so if you want to like and subscribe that would be great and I'll catch you next time. Thanks.